Well, collectors, here we are again. Uh, we're on uh, DCT 121. Can you believe it? Boy, we're really moving along here with these videos. Uh, we had a great video last week, and uh, uh, I don't think we can come up to that one again, but we'll give it a whirl and, uh, and show you what came in this week. Uh, I hope it's interesting stuff. You never know, but... Uh, and you're probably thinking, well, what is that stupid Whitman doing with that dumb old hat on? And uh, the reason I'm wearing it, uh, a collector from uh, The Hague in um, Holland uh, sent me this uh, picture uh, that apparently he got off of, uh, of an, uh, an old movie from Berlin in the 1930s and thought it looked a bit like me. So I'll just stand like this. Do you think it looks like me? Yeah, we've been doing these crazy pictures. Last week we had a picture of, of someone that looked like me in a, in a hunting outfit and uh, uh, one of the collectors wrote in and said it looked more like Ob than me. So I don't know, but uh, anyhow, it's fun. So I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Uh, I like it. I think it, uh, I think it does look a lot like me. So, I'll dispense with this, uh, with this hat then for the moment, and I guess I don't, I guess I don't really need this, uh, this jacket either. I'll just get stripped down a little bit more comfortable here. Let's see where I can put this. And light a cigar. Mm-hmm. Well, we're into springtime now, guys, and uh, uh, it's time to time to plant the flowers. You know that always makes the little woman happy. I know uh, it, it does around here, anyhow. Uh, Marie really comes to life when spring hits, and uh, the other day she came back, oh, with several hundred dollars worth of flowers and uh, uh, plants them all and uh, then next week we'll have some kind of a freeze and they'll all <laughs> have to do it all over again I don't know but you know how things are but anyhow there's a another picture that uh, someone sent me uh, which I think is um, is quite interesting uh, this is an old photograph uh, it looks like uh, New York City uh, and judging by the um, the vehicles here, I don't see anything later than a, a 1939 model. Uh, but if you'll notice, there's a sign here for Imperial Whiskey. And as you guys know, that's my favorite. That's what I drink all the time. And it's interesting to me to see that the, when they're at in 1939, uh, they're advertising 88 years at that point. So just think how long Imperial's been around. It's a, uh, it's absolute rot gut, but I guess an awful lot of people must like it, or it wouldn't have been around all these years. So I think that's really a, an interesting photograph. And then one other picture. You know how we like to show pictures of the uh, collectors' collections if we can, and uh, this picture comes from the. Uh, John Sippel or John Sippel, I'm not sure how he pronounces his name, but um, uh, he sent us a picture here which uh, shows his uh, his dagger collection. It looks like he's doing pretty well there. He's got the, the basics, uh, and then apparently he also likes insignia and tinnies, and he's, uh, he's got some of that on there too. So congratulations, John. Looking good there, and uh, keep it up. And it looks to me like uh, maybe you could use an SS dagger next, huh? How about that? Well, anyhow, good luck to you, and thanks for thanks for sending in the picture. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, uh, uh, I had shown uh, this piece a couple of months ago, uh, which I'm going to show you in a second, and I really didn't know what it was. And since then, my friend Barry Smith, who's a great researcher, uh, looked into what this item was and uh, he found out exactly. 
and I thought that I would share that with you because it's kind of an interesting thing. Um, before we get started on it though, uh, boy I could use a pop, how about you Ob? Sure. Yeah, it's about that time isn't it? Yeah, let's see what we can do here and get started. Give me your glass, Ob. All right, good. That glass doesn't look too clean. But I guess, it, as I always say, the alcohol kills the germs. So here we go. First of the day. Yep. You in a good mood today, Ob? You seem pretty quiet already yeah. here this morning. Yeah. I guess maybe you need a pop to wake you up a little bit. Let's see. There we go. Yep. Just right. Little wham there. And get our stir going. Okay, we're in good shape now. Here we go, guys. Best to you all. Happy springtime. Mm. Wow, that's a winner. Whew. Or maybe a loser. <laughs> Your perspective on things. Mm. How's yours taste, Ob? It's good. Okay. Well, let me get this one item I was talking about out. I think that uh, that this is a uh, a very interesting piece. Now, what you're looking at here, collectors, uh, this is a plaster copy. Uh, that was made of a Bible cover uh, from the medieval times. The Bible's from about 1300. And um, for you guys that uh, that know your religion, uh, you can see the the scenes that are all depicted here uh, is um, the life of Christ uh, from birth uh, to res to um, uh, crucifixion and then resurrection. Uh, all done in these little scenes. It has the apostles and all kinds of stuff. And um, what you see here are what the hinges looked like on the um, uh, on the original Bible. And on this side was what the catch looked like. So in essence, you have a an exact replica of this Bible. Uh, but what is also interesting is that. On the reverse of the cast, if the camera can get in there, uh, there's a stamping from the um, the Berlin State Museum, and you also see there's a political eagle uh, in the middle of it, uh, and this comes from um, I believe the work was done in uh, 1944. So you say, well, what what is this really? Um, it's kind of interesting, the, um, uh, the museum in Berlin uh, has a division uh, which is called the Gibbs Formerei. Gibbs Formerei, you can see the spelling there because my pronunciation is terrible. And what the Gibbs Formerei does uh, since the 1819 uh, this division of the museum has been making perfect plaster plaster copies of ancient artifacts, Egyptian things, Inca things, you name it. Uh, and this is kind of a needed service because a lot of museums would love to have copies of some of these ultra rare pieces and that's what they do here. So that's where this this comes from. Uh, it, the cast was made by the Gibbs former eye uh, part of the museum and how does it get into our hands well uh, this piece was sent in to me by a collector 
uh, whose father uh, brought it back after the war. And apparently he was in the Gibbs Former Eye section of the Berlin Museum and suddenly this uh, wound up uh, in his um, duffel bag and that's how it got here. So uh, it's not something for everyone I know uh, but I think it's really a, um, a very beautiful beautiful thing uh, and it's kind of interesting the, the uh, the, uh, the NSDAP, of course, was uh, uh, not religious. In fact, they professed there be no religion. Uh, but yet here you have things like this that went on and were available apparently for wealthy people to buy. Uh, so I think that's kind of, a, kind of an interesting thing. If, if nothing else, it's very, very beautiful. I know it's not for everybody, but, uh, but I like it. And... Uh, and think it's a very interesting item. Okay, hope you like that, guys. I'll put this back so I don't wreck it. All right. And then we'll get on to our first box here. Let's see what we got here, Rob. Uh, uh, this is coming from uh, Westbury, New York. That's not too far from here, I don't think. I don't know. Never heard of it. Never heard of Westbury of? Nope. No. Let's see the best way to get this baby open here. Doesn't look like an easy item to open. There's two boxes that are apparently shoved into one. See, I get a little bit open here, then maybe I can see what to do next. Man, I'm not doing so well here. The Bob Burns cutter. Oh, this is all apparently glued in addition to being taped. Oh, bear with me, collectors. It's, I know it's. You're probably sitting there. Come on, Whitman, get with it. We. Wrap out and get that box opened. Now, well, I'm trying, guys. Yeah, this is a this is a tough one. Let's see, are we getting anywhere here, Rob? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. No, we're still not there yet. Looks like this is the item here. Ah, here we go. All right, progress, guys. Sorry to waste your time with this stuff. I need a professional unboxer these days. Let's we'll see what comes on or further. Aha. Uh -huh. You're getting there. Getting there, yeah. Ah, I think we're getting to the meat. Ah. ah, that should help some. Well, here we go, guys. Looks like we're there. Mm-hmm. All that for that? <laughs> yeah, that's a okay. little overkill you yeah. think of. Well, we don't know what this stuff is. There's either. a couple Felder hollers in there. He just wants to make sure that, uh, I don't blame him, that it arrives safely and, you know, the post office drops a baby grand piano on it, you know, you gotta, gotta always think something like that could happen, and uh, nobody wants that. Now let's see what we got here. Ah, good, we're gonna start out with an SS Tiger. There we go. Yeah, here we go. Well, let's see, what I see so far is, um, uh, it looks like a boker by the cross guards, wouldn't you say, Ob? Yeah, 
I'll yeah, it's definitely a boker, and uh, it's got a good early hanger on it. Um, the anodizing, obviously, uh, wore thin, uh, and this man uh, uh, had his scabbard period painted, uh, but it looks like the period paint didn't hold up so well. But what are you going to do? And uh, the fittings are nice. They match the uh, the hilt fittings. The ball's in decent shape. All the screws are there. Well, let's see what the blade looks like. Well, okay. Uh, this is a lot of superficial stuff here that that might might come off. Um, it's this old grease or something? Yeah, it's old grease and uh, I can see the grain is still on the blade and look at that dark motto, typical yeah. boker, you know, with that. Assuming it's a boker. Yes, it is. Uh, and it's also a uh, ground room. Um, again, there's superficial uh, old grease on there. Uh, we can tell it's a ground room because um, the uh, trademark is the small mark that Boker used on room inscriptions. Uh, the job was really uh, quite well done. Looks like it was probably a factory job. It's got a number one on the uh, on the guard. So this is something that uh, the way it looks now, uh, I know is not uh, not the greatest in the world, but uh, that blade will clean up. Uh, and possibly the um, the next owner may want to get uh, this scabbard uh, professionally repainted and that would make a, a big difference in the dagger also. But, as they say it is what it is, it's still a real dagger and in, a, uh, and in an untouched state. That's the way it came back. And what the heck, it's always good to see Boca Recesses in it. I like them. I think Boker made one of the one of the best uh, uh, 33 models, don't you, Rob? Yeah, Bokers are great. Yeah, they're, they're always always good. Uh, if you can have a Boker SS in your collection, you're uh, seems like more of them have been turning up lately well, than usual. Uh, yeah, I guess we've had our yeah. Sometimes you don't see one for six months, and then mm -hmm. there's Three or four of them, but mm. I forgot to look. Are there any numbers on that? No. Oh, I want to saw them. <laughs> no, didn't get lucky on that. And let's see what else we got here. Yeah, looks like we're looking at a at a police bayonet, I think. Just a, a standard example here. Uh, the uh, when you see leather like this, uh, the leather is still quite good, uh, but boy, a little meltonium black shoe cream and that'll come up really nice and really uh, bring this bayonet back a lot because the leather is is not rotted at all. It just shows some scuffing. Uh, has good grip plates. Uh, you can see the the old hole here. I think I've explained this before, but maybe some collectors would like to know that um, uh, most police bayonets that we see were originally produced during the Weimar period in the middle to late 20s, early 30s. And uh, when Himmler took over the police in 1936, rather than buy all new bayonets, they decided to revamp the old Weimar ones. So what they did, these bayonets had a clamshell on them beneath the uh, hilt, and um, uh, they were also uh, seven. To, the blade was 17 inches long. Well, they cut the blades down and the scabbard uh, to a 13-inch point, and when they took the clamshell off, that meant they had to reduce the um, the hilt to make up the space where the clamshell was. So the uh, grips had to be refitted, and that's why you see the old hole, that's where the rivets were for the original Weimar period time. See, there's a little bit of the one on the other side that still shows. 
uh, and this has matching numbers and I can also uh, point out that the uh, the numbering system was done by the Weimar police and it had no bearing at all on uh, uh, the Nazi police versions. Sometimes you'll see the numbers ground off or mismatched, but uh, it didn't matter to them. Let's see what the blade looks like. Yeah. Now uh, here, uh, uh, this blade, just like the SS blade, it just needs a little wiping off. It's not in bad condition. Uh, and again, I told you that they cut the blade down. You can see that at the end of the blade because the fuller keeps on going right to the tip. Uh, and then the fuller would end short of the original tip. So when you see that fuller go all the way down like that, you can look for signs that the, uh, that the piece was redone, which the signs are there. So this is a piece by Alcozo. And uh, like I say, it's, uh, it's not a bad piece at all. It just needs a little cleaning up. It's, uh, uh, this man, obviously, uh, however he got it, that's the way it was, and they look like uh, both um, both veteran pieces to me. At least that's the way you see them. So that was pretty good, and uh, certainly well packed. All right, collectors, we'll uh, look at the next box here. Uh, oh, this is coming from our favorite place, Ob. I think we had one of these in the recent past from Folsom, California. Oh, yeah, yeah, End yeah. of the Folsom <laughs> Prison. Yeah. Johnny Cash, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see what's coming from Folsom again. Is it the same collector? Yeah. Okay. Probably this box has the handcuffs in it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, take yourself this handcuff. Handcuffs are popular. <laughs> yeah. Handcuffs are popular. They, they should be more popular in more ways than one. Yeah, well. <laughs> well let's see what we got here. Uh, got a letter that I sort of cut the dear Tom off, but uh, well, let's let's see what what all this is about. Um, a nice little bag there. Oh, here we go, guys. Yeah, here's a, um, a very uh, decent uh, Hitler Youth knife. Um, looks like a later piece with the, uh, uh, the pop metal fittings and the platings kind of turned a little gray, but it's not too bad. Yeah, definitely late, yeah. but still in late, good shape. Late, yeah, good yeah. shape. Because late ones, boy, sometimes you don't see any plating left at all. And the, the grip plates are good with a good insignia. And uh, look at the paint on that scabbard, Ob. Yeah, that's good. That's not bad at all. Wow, the back is still mint. And look at these. Yeah, they're like hexagons or something, huh? Yeah. Yeah, there's a plate behind it, too. Never saw that before. You know what I think it is? I think it's a period repair. Yeah. You know? It's very well done, though, isn't it? I like that. Yep. Oh, good blade. Look there, Ob. Yeah, it's a nice example. It is. Yeah, I like that. And uh, on the reverse, uh, M. <laughs> Got to put my glasses on here. <coughs> M756. Uh, and made in 1941. So we were right, it is a late one. Uh, we can look and see who M756 is, guys. Uh, if I can find it in Robbie's chart here. Let's see here. 756. That's not a number we see very often. Oh, it's C.D. Schaff. Huh. That's the one with the old salt, you know, when you see the logo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a very They maker. were a pretty good company. Yeah. So, uh, considering the uh, the late date that this was made and so forth, the uh, uh, it's not a bad knife at all. In fact, yeah, I nice like piece. it. Yeah. It's not, it's, it's not bad. The blade is uh, the blade is terrific on it. Yeah, that's not bad. Let's see what else is in here. Oh, looks like 
have some kind of a book, Rob. Probably in Mein Kampf. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Or a big Bible. <laughs> Yeah, wow, this is a large one. Yeah, obvious right. It's a yeah, it's big though. Home. It's like yeah. family size. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, wonder if it's, it's dedicated to anybody. It's, it's in nice condition. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got in here. I have to read this myself. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, here is the. Um, the Liberating Veteran, Sergeant Harry, it's like Harry, uh, Shom, Shorm, something like that. Yeah. And that's a serial number. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, and let's see, let's see what kind of shape the the book's in. Uh, looks good. There's that uh, onion skin, and uh, it's a 39 version. So it looks like it's uh, it's pretty good, Rob. Let me just see it real quick. Yep. Let's see if the uh, if the collector says anything about the. It's probably uh, the biggest one I've seen yeah. as a single. They don't come. They usually don't come that big, but I guess they're available. He says it's uh, the mine comp with the veteran's name signed in the book. Along with research of the veteran, how okay. about that? Uh, apparently, because of the uh, serial number, uh, he was able to trace the uh, the veteran, and well, there now we know his name, Ob Shearer. Shearer. Uh, apparently, that's his um, tombstone. Yep. So here's the whole. Uh, uh, research on uh, on the veteran, so that's kind of neat with the book, huh? Sure. Yeah. What the heck? Thanks for your service, sir. Yep. Got himself a purple heart. Yep. Kind of like that. We um, we don't specialize in mine comps, but uh, we do get our share well, of them. We have our share of them. And uh, they sell very well, don't they? Well, we have a lot of different ones, too. It's not just one out there. There's a ton. Yeah. You can collect those if you wanted to. I mean, yeah, there's so <laughs> many different editions. And, and there's wedding editions and, and signed editions. Yeah, and some signed by the gal lighters. And uh, so there's a lot of variants with them. And uh, and Ob's right, they are, uh, they are quite... Um, we quite even have that Japanese edition. Yeah, that's true. Two-volume edition from Japan. It's amazing. Yeah. That's the one you read from back to front. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. funny because the Fuhrer's picture is all the way in the back. You're like, that's all the way in the back, but that's just the way you read it. <laughs> yeah, well, there we go, guys. Mm. Let's see what else we got here. Well, I got an empty glass here, I'll tell you that much. You what? Empty glass? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, mine's mostly ice, okay. I'll get you the sign, so that's it. Have to make another drink. Can't be sober doing this kind of stuff. Well, I guess you could be, but it wouldn't be as much fun. All right. Yeah, that's a go. good one there. <laughs> Little Imperial. Yep. Ah, yes. Nothing like it. Get the blood flowing. All right, and we're we're off and running here. Let's see what we got next. Uh, Where's this box coming from? Uh, hmm, this looks like it's coming from England. Yep, um, see they've got uh, 
They've got the king on their stamps now instead oh, yeah, of the how queen. About that? Yeah, yeah that, that's something I. They must have just done that, I guess. Yeah, that's, that's the first I've seen of that. Yeah. Yeah, they got to change all that money now and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I hope he's going to do all right too. He's having his health problems, as you guys know. I'm sure he'll be just fine, believe yeah. me. Well, let's see what's coming from jolly old England across the pond, as they say. Uh, let's see. Phone ringing, that's a good sign. Mm. Ah, that's ringing too. <laughs> okay, what have we got here or anything? Uh, well, just a lot of a lot of names and uh, bank accounts. Uh, I guess he's expecting a wire transfer. That's what that's all about. Well, let's see what all this is going to be here. Yep. Now, how'd you guys like that video last week, huh? Boy, with that, that standard and all, wasn't it something that we're getting? Beautiful stuff. And we had a lot of, a lot of high-end daggers too, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, something else that video. Yeah, that was really, a, that was a real eye-opener. Well, we still have time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Well, you can't expect to, to get uh, things like that in every week. It's just not going to happen. But it's fun once in a while when you really get a lot of rare stuff all in one shot. Uh, let's see what we got here. Uh, looking Luftwaffe. Uh, oh yeah. Good. I like I like first model Luftwaffe. I know you guys do too. Uh, yeah, you see. get a lot of dagger there. You get a lot of dagger for the money, mm -hmm. and they're uh, they're really really great looking. Um, Let's see what the ins and outs are on this piece. Uh, well, we got uh, we got some really uh, really nice uh, early nickel fittings, and um, like I like to tell you, see when the silvering is still between the legs of the sun wheels, that's a sign that there's there's not a lot of wear to the dagger, and the silverings on the cross guard. Sun wheels too, as well as the reverse of sun wheels. The grip leather is excellent. Um, the scabbard, well, it shows a little bumping around here, uh, but a lot of that it's uh, they're just bumps, not really cuts in the leather. And uh, again, a little meltonium polish, and a lot can be done with that. Uh, the one thing I see here that I think is a problem, though, do you see something weird, Ob? Yeah, the lower fitting looks a little odd to me. You think it looks a little odd? Mm -hmm. You know what's wrong with it? The cap's gone. You know, they had a cap on the bottom. Yeah, there's something funky about that. Somebody yeah. somebody uh, uh, removed the, uh, the bottom part of the fitting. Boy, it looks like it was done a long time ago and... Uh, it looks like there's a slit there or something. Yeah. Why don't you go grab another one so we can compare it? Because you really don't notice it, but you, it's off. Okay, yeah, maybe yeah. that's a good idea. Just cut it a minute and I'll sure. go get another piece. Okay. Yeah, collectors, um, as per Ob's good idea, uh, I went into the vault to get another first look piece so that you could see what's happened here. They virtually... Uh, uh, took off the bottom button here and then peened the surfaces around on here. Um, 
I suspect that that was done by the original owner. Yeah, well, nobody's going to do that. Uh, it's not denazifying it or anything. No, it's just, the, I, it's it probably got really banged up and it looked like crap or it cracked. Is, yeah, it's, you uh, think this is one piece? This is all one piece, correct? Uh, it is one it's piece. Not, that yeah, thing isn't screwed yeah, on at the no, bottom of it. No, yeah, it's that's all what one happened. Piece. It got so smashed, they're like, I'm taking it off. That that may be what it is. Uh, but that's the first time I've ever seen that, and I've seen an awful lot of first model Luftwaffe daggers. Let me just take a look at the end of the tip of the dagger in here. The dagger itself? Yeah. Yeah, let's see if there's any effect to it. No. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Still needle-like. Yeah. Uh, good blade. It did its job, but it won't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh, it's an icorn, nice too. Icorn, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, the blade just needs a little wiping off. It, it looks to be in mint condition. So there you go, guys. Uh, Let me we, just see how they did it. Let me see what they did here. It, kinda, it almost looks like he shoved something in there. Yeah, to, uh, I can't seem to get it, though. These are tight yeah. shots. Oh. First time I've seen that. It does jump out, though. There's something just off, you know. Yeah, well, when you first look at it, you go, oh, what's wrong here? There's something, and it's, you know, the, the tip normally is kind of subtle anyhow, yeah, and then when it's not there, though, you, you that, notice it right Nothing away. for nothing. It's pretty decorative for a uh, protective ball for the dagger, you know? Oh, yeah. So it's better than an SA or yeah. an SS ball. They're just a ball. That's Well, uh, on the on the 55-centimeter uh, long DLVs, uh, the uh, tip has like four sections four on the sections. bottom. See, that's yeah. something in there too. You got yeah. one of those lying around? <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> might have. Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. Or do I? Uh, let me just look it up. Collectors, as uh, Rob suggested, we should get out a um, 55 centimeter scabbard just to show you what we're talking about. Uh, see how they have four four loops on the bottom of that? That's amazing. It's what? It's amazing. Who would they even yeah. think to look? But there it is. Yeah. And you can see how much thinner the scabbard Definitely. is too than yeah. the standard ones. Uh, so that's kind of a an interesting comparison. Uh, I'm glad we just happened to have that one laying around, Rob. Oh yeah, just laying around there. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's uh, it's interesting to see that kind of stuff when it's compared next to each other. Sure. If you're uh, if you didn't know. You know, yeah, you wouldn't think there's anything wrong with that though. No, you would never guess, so. Well, so I think that's kind of a, kind of interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. So, there we go, we have that. Uh, these are mine and we'll, we'll put this baby back in the, in the little paper here. I wonder if the consigner knew it. Um, <laughs> I remember I knew it when he sent me pictures of it. Oh, okay. I think I do have another pity. Take care of that. Unless you like it the way it is, Bob. No, you gotta make it right. Gotta make it right, yeah. Unless it's some obscure maker who, who had uh, different no, fittings. It's uh, an right icorn now, right? Yeah. And with stuff like that, collectors, uh, uh, as long as you use a uh, fitting of the same vintage and is identical to the original one, there's uh, there's certainly no crime in that. Yeah, I think that that got, just got destroyed, and they had to make it look better than it was. Yeah, I think you're probably it was probably right. bent off, you yeah. know, and hanging off the side or something. And yeah, and he may have been an officer that wasn't going to wear his piece like that. He was embarrassed, maybe, about it. And, uh, well, whatever you have to do, I guess, huh? that's the way it is. Oh, let's see what we got next. Uh, I don't know, here. Uh, uh, this is this is coming from, uh, I, don't, I don't know where here. piece of paper over here. Uh, uh -huh. Orville, California. Don't know that place either. You ever hear of that? O-R-O-V-I-L-L-E. 
It's right next to Redenbacher, California. Oh, yeah. Orville's right next to Redenbacher. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Orville's, California, right next to Redenbacher. Need a drum roll after that one, Rob. Then I'm thump. Now let's see what we got here. Oh, looks like we got a free trash bag. Down here, put the box on the floor. There's more stuff in the box. What's your drink there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it looks like we got some uh, got some flags out. It's a little more than that. Yeah, maybe with a nice fringe on it, and uh, it's one of those farming stand arts. Looks like one of the maybe those town standards. Yeah. yeah. Oh boy, look at this. Yeah. Wow. Look oh, the there. NSBO. Yeah. NS. NSBO. BO. Uh, the NSBO was um, that was the union uh, that they had in the. Uh, Can you straighten it out? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I just want to see the black. Yeah. yeah. I want to see the field. Yeah. There you go. And uh, that's the uh, the town, I guess. Emil Neufer, 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 NSBO, and then the uh, uh, it's got the standard um, uh, Hockenkreutz in the middle, double-sided. Do you have all the rings on that, baby? Well, I'm going to check here. Uh, I can't oh, it's really not rings; it's loops. Got, yeah. Okay. Uh, I get in trouble for. We, got it. The we, whole know, we know what it is, so yeah. I would just have to kind of, you guys know what these Looks things are. Looks like it's in good shape though, Pop, from what I can tell. Yeah, it's not in bad shape. Um, no rings though. Yeah, it's got one oh, ring. Oh, one ring. RZM? Um, it is not uh, RZM marked. Uh, and the ring is tied to the... Yeah, tied so to the So that loops. may have been added on at a yeah. later time for hanging it up during the period. Yeah, it's got uh, uh, these uh, cords attached to it. I wonder whether this is a town or whether this is somebody's name. Somebody's right? name. <laughs> Neufer. Looks more like somebody's name. But I don't know. We'll have to check it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll check it out. But it, uh, it's got a couple of age holes in it, I can yeah. see. But uh, overall, it's, uh, uh, it's kind of a rare flag. You don't see the NSBO stuff. Watch that stogie. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing there. Let's see what else is in this box. I don't wonder what we got here, Rob. It sounded like a helmet. <laughs> yeah, well, looks like you're right again, Rob. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is a this is not a bad uh, not a bad helmet here. This is a um, a Luftwaffe model M40, and um, uh, the uh, the paint is still quite good on it. Yeah, that uh, that decal is about a hundred percent. Yeah, it's really close. Uh, just a little hit there and a little hit over there, but uh, you don't see them that nice. That's a nice, uh, nice helmet, and uh, oh boy, wow, nice liner, the original uh, uh, tie string and uh, chin straps go on the time, but the white chin straps going, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and here's his um, his name. What is that? Looks upside. Like, looks like Wolf, maybe. Looks like Wolf from Upside Down, and. Uh, and these numbers here, I've never seen them stamped like that. I don't know what those numbers equate to. 2037. Hmm. 
It's not 37. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And uh, let's see if it's... Uh, yeah, you yeah. It's a Q64, guys. Yep. So that's kind of a medium-sized helmet. It's got a good look to it, though. I like it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not a bad helmet at all. I, I like that, too. It's nice. Let's see what else we got here. Might be another helmet yeah, on. Yeah, I would think so. This baby is. Well, double decal arm. Double decal is what we're looking at. Well, the liner is uh, really, really good. Uh, man, that liner's hard to believe, isn't it? To the 57. I'm not sure this. Yeah, this is a now. A, now it's actually it's an M40. Ob. These are. I don't think they're the separate fittings. Doesn't look like it. I think they're the stamped out. Uh, yeah, hard to hard to tell, but let's see if I can see in here. I think they're the rivet type. Sorry, let me just take a look at the decals. Decals are tremendous. And the finish really looks good too. You think that's an M35? It's hard to tell whether they're separate rivets or just the punched outs. Let's just say. I'll tell you if they're punched out or not. I think it's a punch out pop. That's uh, not separate. That's, yeah, that's what I kind of thought too. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you guys that are real helmet guys, you'll know right away what we're looking at here. And uh, the liner just seems um, uh, incredible condition. I mean, it's possible, but it doesn't look like anybody ever wore it to me. So maybe the liner's a replacement, I don't know, but we'll find out. We'll check it out. Yeah, this one's... Uh, uh, it looks like uh, EF something. 63 maybe? I don't know. Can you make out what that is, Ob? Uh, not really, no. Okay, guys, uh, uh, we're down to our uh, our last box here. Uh, I haven't seen any real Larrys yet, but maybe one will be here. Uh, we don't, we didn't get a lot of stuff this week, but uh, figuring it was. Uh, Easter week and so forth. Uh, that's going to be a little off from norm. But let's see what we got here. Oh, well, this looks nice. One. You like the bags? Two. Three. How about that, guys? Pretty nice bags, huh? <laughs> this is coming from. Um, Big Stone Gap, Virginia. Boy, that sounds like a neat place. Ever hear of that, Ob? No. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I think I need another one. I'm ahead of you, Ob, it looks like. You must have been too busy with the camera and not uh, hitting that glass. Uh, let's see. I'll have to make up for that <laughs> somehow. Well, let's see what we got here. Uh, 
Oh, hello. All right, guys, we're starting out pretty nice here. In fact, very, very nice. It's a hell of a scabbard. Yeah, it's a nice, uh, a nice scabbard. And yeah, hang on. Yeah, there you go, guys. That's a pretty, a pretty SS. It um, kind of looks like an icorn with the uh, with the accent grooves. Beautiful grip. I don't see any problems with the grip at all. Yeah, they they do look like icorn uh, cross guards. Uh, I don't see a um, I don't see a group of mark. So I wonder what that means. Okay, the blade is not mint, but it's uh, it's okay. Shows a little bit of um, of uh, grinding there. Well, now I see why there's no district <laughs> mark. <laughs> yeah. There we go, guys. There's an original Himmler dagger. Yep. The blade's not mint, but it's still, still decent. The number on the cross guard? Well, let's look and see. Yeah, there we go, guys. There's yeah. that four. Yeah. yeah, I thought that looked like Icorn cross guard, so I was right. Is that your Larry, Tommy? Yeah, it might be the Larry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not a mint one, but still, uh, it's real. And in decent, uh, decent condition. So there you go, guys. That might be an affordable Himmler there. Let's see what's in the next thing here. Oh, looks like a nice Icorn Army dagger. Never been cleaned with an orange grip. Got the last type uh, fittings and scabbard. Uh, the grip is a kind of a deep orange. Ooh, good blade. Very nice blade in there. Oh yeah. And there's that 1940 stamping there where you have the small squirrel, uh, which makes sense with the last type fittings too. So that's a that's a good um, a good basic uh, icorn army there. Nothing wrong with that piece at all. And then I see we've got one one more in this group. Oh, another army. Hmm. I'm not sure. This looks like a, a pretty early piece here. Uh, I'm not sure whose cross guard that is, but the uh, pommel has an alco or uh, what do you call it? Uh, has a alcoza look to it, though, doesn't it? The pommel, yeah. Let's see. What we got here. No, it's an icorn. It's a it's a real early early icorn. Uh, that must be the uh, first type uh, icorn eagle. Uh, and it's so early that it uh, that it has the two screws instead of the one screw. Uh, this is a very good dagger, guys. Uh, that cross guard is really beautiful. And the blade is uh, wow. It's got the early, uh, earliest mark there, 33 to 35. You want me to hold it the other way up? Let me just have handle it. Yeah. So that's that's a, that's a real gem there. Uh, that's one of the initial production uh, icorns. Yep. And these uh, these mounts are um, are all brass. And it's the kind of dagger where we're probably going to see the uh, the tapered tang. We'll just take a look here. 
because it's easy to do. Yeah, yeah, this is, oh yeah, that's a brass, uh, sure. brass fitting. Yeah, there's that early tapered tang. And yeah, yeah, that's, uh, this is a first rate, um, really a first rate piece. Um, I guess I didn't recognize the first style eagle because there's hardly any wear on it. You never see them that crisp. Yeah, it should be worn see, down, but it's look not. At, look yeah. at the breast feathering that's still on there and all. Uh, and the work on the inside of the grip is very, very well done. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a real little little treasure here. Uh, for you guys looking for a uh, first style uh, Icorn Army, this is a gem. It's really, really nice. Boy, look at that workmanship! The way that screws on there, beautiful, like a machine. Yeah, well, I like uh, I like this dagger a lot, and the and the the blade is mint too, which uh, really means a lot on a early piece like that. So that's uh, that's kind of good, and uh, well, uh, as I said, that was our last box, uh, but I did have one one piece uh, uh, come in here this week that was brought in by. Uh, uh, an 82-year-old man, and uh, he showed me a letter uh, that I wrote to him in 1983, uh, telling them if he ever wanted to sell the dagger that he had shown me uh, to get back to me. So here he is, 41 years later, <laughs> getting back to me, and when he came in, he says, you remember me, Tom? I said, well, uh, he says, we met in Allentown in uh, 1983, and uh, don't you remember? And I said, well, um, I said, vaguely, uh, but <laughs> I guess that was kind of a little lie. I didn't remember, uh, but I'll show you what the, uh, the dagger was that I asked him if he ever wanted to sell it to get back to me, and it's really worth looking at. This is uh, this is quite a quite a piece, guys. Just feast your eyes on that beautiful thing with the hanging straps. Now, what this is, guys. Uh, some of you may not be familiar with uh, German Imperial things, uh, but uh, in 1872 they had a model called an Opla Cotton bayonet that uh, looked very similar to this, uh, but not as fancy. Uh, and then around 1902, 1904, uh, the paymasters and engineers in the Navy uh, thought they'd like to have a dagger that resembled the Opla Cotton, only fancier. Uh, and this one is probably the fanciest one I've ever seen. Uh, just look at the um, first of all. Look at the look at the detail on the back strap. The, the beautiful raised oak leaves, um, and then on the top, the crown has the real high finials. Just beautiful. Uh, then the Imperial Cross Guard, uh, but if you notice there's little uh, additions put into the arms of the Cross Guard uh, which match uh, the work in the, um, the scabbard fittings. Uh, then it has a, a clamshell on it with a fouled anchor. Uh, and then the two, the two hanging straps are still in mint condition and uh, look at the detail on the snap clips. Uh, and this beautiful chased work, just incredible. Uh, look at how those oak leaves are formed in the metal, uh, and then all the areas surrounding it are chased with that kind of a, uh, like a scale pattern, I guess you would call it, like a fish scale pattern. Uh, and then on the reverse, 
It, uh, it has the same fine fish scale patterns with the, uh, with the oak leaves. Uh, and then it has a lock mechanism uh, on the reverse, which flips up just like that. And then the blade is removed. Just look at that blade. Absolutely mint. Uh, really, really hard to... Uh, WKC, Paul? WKC, yeah. Uh, it's got the small night head yeah. mark, uh, which puts it about 1906, 1907, something like that. Uh, but it's just remarkable. Uh, a naval dagger, uh, 115, 20 years old, and the condition of it is just extraordinary. Just beautiful. I love the etch blade. How about that sailing ship? Isn't that nice, Ob? Yeah, it's really nice to have. Yeah. Mint. It is mint. And you collectors, I guess you know, I, I love, love naval daggers and uh, especially uh, these kind of um, fancy variations. Uh, you don't see them very often because, um, you know, in those days, uh, uh, a piece like this was, uh, was very expensive and um, uh, these people didn't have a lot of money. Uh, although this uh, paymaster, uh, maybe he was dipping into the till a little bit when he made the <laughs> payroll because that is, uh, that is one, uh, one super, super piece. And uh, I don't know, Bob, should I put this in my collection? Yeah, I think you should. I think I should too. Uh, I have a paymaster. It took uh, you, what, 41 years to get it? <laughs> yeah, 41 years to get it. I have a paymaster now that's, um, that's named um, uh, to a, uh, a naval paymaster uh, who was actually on the, um, uh, what's the ship that was sunk down in uh, Uruguay, Argentina, the, the famous uh, ship. Uh, the Graf Spey. Yeah, the Graf Spey. He was, he was still in the Navy then, and he was the um, paymaster on the Graf Spey. Uh, but his dagger is not as fancy as this, so uh, I think there's a spot somewhere upstairs in my collection for that. So, hmm, I guess that's the Larry, uh, but it's really the Tommy. <laughs> yeah, the Larry. it's the Tommy. Um, and that's, uh, that's all we have for you uh, this week. Uh, uh, nothing spectacular, uh, but still uh, good pieces. And uh, maybe there's something that somebody would like to add to their collection there. Or there's some good starter pieces or whatever. So thanks a lot for, uh, for watching. Uh, and we'll see you again in another week. Thanks a lot. See ya. <laughs>